Hey there, Cancer. This is Joy with Joy of the World, here to take an intuitive peek into the energies going on around you. Friends and subscribers, welcome back. And if you're new to this channel, click that subscribe button, ring the bell. They'll notify you anytime I post new videos. Also, if you find you like the content we provide here at Joy of the World, give us that big thumbs up, like, and share. To those of you who've sewn donations into the channel of every size, when they come together, they produce some resources. I have three new decks, one that is already showing up here, and two more down below. We might even get into another one that's going on along the way. Let's see how it goes. So I wanted to tell you a big thank you. And uh, I also want to tell you that you're wanting to turn things around so you can move forward, which lets me know there's something going in the wrong direction. Now, difficult? No, no big deal. Just awareness here. So there's been this crazy energy yesterday. Things were shifting, almost like a fun house, you know, where the floor is shifting and rolling and moving around that it was I would say it's hard to get the footing but it's really hard to get comfortable with the movement of the ground underneath your feet like an earthquake right and it could create that create some of that disorientation which maybe got you face the wrong direction you don't know it making me see one of those games where you put the bat to the head so they put a blindfold on you and they spin oh no 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 you put your head down to the bat and you spin and spin and spin and spin and spin around, then you stand up and you're supposed to be able to swing at the ball. But the thing is, you're so disoriented because your eyes were down focusing on something else while the world was spinning and you lost your directional uh, flow. So with that going on, we're gonna get things turned around because it has been awkward today. But I do know, um, I did a reading the other day that was about Mars coming into uh, retrograde and some of these different energies that are stepping up and stepping in from now through, you know, like holiday season. And uh, Mars was talking about the most difficult point is going to be leading up to the retrograde because there's a lot of that tug of war and the, the seams of the fabric of life going on that uh, can be a challenge there. That's interesting. Usually I shuffle and shuffle and shuffle and you're like, no, pull these out. Which one comes next? You do. And then you. Okay, Cancer. Ooh. Mm. All right. Strange energy, but I'm, I'm going to keep going anyway because my goal is to have these put out on a regular basis where you can know your day that yours comes out. And y'all should be Tuesday. Um. So with this going on up top about making this quick turnaround in order to be able to move forward is starting out with the Ace of Wands. Rising up, opening up, surrendering in, allowing the flow of energy to carry you. There's gonna be a bit of exposure going on is what I'm seeing here and that's some of the discomfort about, mm, we say, you know, like here, her divinity's on the upper half, being exposed by the light of day in fresh air. Spirit is starting to do, 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 strip tease you, un undress you, expose you to this new way of living, this new way of life. That, that quick turn, it's like you want to turn around quickly so you can step forward. Well, this is actually called bravery. And it takes bravery to be able to step forward to allow the flow of spirit to fully come through you not just to you like it has here because as it arrives it's like this magic elixir that causes the opening of the flower and when this lotus opens this water lily opens it speaks and it speaks volumes it speaks its volume in your presentation in who you are stepping forward as a person like we talk often the throat chakra is your truth it is your example your emblem it is about your integrity shining that the inside and the outside match up and that's why why uh, life was talking about you having nothing to hide so it's just kind of unveiling you a bit and you're like ah maybe if I don't look them in the eye they won't see you know so you're letting it happen but before where you can make the contact and this was was your hiding now that this hiding's coming off this hiding's coming back so there's a little bit of that energy of wanting to get your face back around so you can you can stay in the fast lane of life here which is the flow of life the flow of energy that um, the faster it flows, it reaches a state where it stops the flux and it, it uh, levels and it stabilizes. When it stabilizes, it solidifies and it comes into reality. And, and this is your truth coming into reality here, my friend. Okay, 
So we're going to run through these and then we're going to dig a little deeper is what I see going on. Next, we have the wise fox coming in. Talk about death being a trade-off. Being aware that there is an exchange, that it wasn't just about loss, that it's not just about they're going to disrobe you and do this sort of thing, but there is a divine dance, a divine exchange going on here, a connection of the energies, the synergy moving about, that although the leader has different steps than the follower, they work in conjunction with one another, and also... The hands, like a battery, they form a circuit, so the actual essence of that dance is flowing through both parties, co-mingling and becoming this whole new, like the, the angel of the chair up here, fresh, vibrant, lively energy. It brings life where there was none. Not to something that was dead, where there was none. This being, this body of self didn't even exist. It was given birth to through that dance. It was giving birth to through that touch of spirit coming to you that is now opening you up to flow fully through you. So it's wild that it's touching down here from the heavenly realm onto earth, but it's tapping in like lightning, like the pull of a lightning strike from the center of the earth up through you and out, okay? But I see it's on the transition going downward to make the return that there's that bit of a stop because there is that hesitation to being fully exposed, especially on the lower half, right? Um, that's that begins to get into where the upper questions your reputation this begins to question your morals and your character and you're like mm, I don't know what to think about all that but the the fox is over here even the fox is enticed and curious about this new life coming forth when when you can instill the curiosity of the fox as opposed to the sly and the shrewdness of the self-serving a new harness in its curious nature into something that is open, that's that's a power all of its own. So that leads us into the Lady of Pentacles. It's the rising of your divine eye is what you're saying. You're talking about the High Priestess is rising from the center of the earth where you buried her, okay? Male or female, whoever's watching this, the High Priestess was that that innate knowing it's the gift of knowledge rising up from the earth once you know we move through this and we accept this change because you know once something does die it, you don't bring it back to life it transforms in this whole new being this whole new body is invented here that that's making the return as it's rising up that affords this to make the return the energy to now move through you and as it moves through you it's going to go from like this is your uh, ascendant, descendant, your midheaven, okay, and, and your IC. So your true north is your IC, okay? You've got that going on. It's rising from there. It is your north star. So it's almost like you could say it's rising, but at the same time, watch, this hand's not moving, okay? You're making the plunge into that pool, and you tap down on the bottom of the pool, and you come back up and when you come back up it comes with you okay but you can see at this point you fully unclothed and you luscious you're rich you are abundant you are balanced you are trusting in that divine flow this has to do with that bravery okay and allowing the flux they're talking about rapidly increasing but the elements of the high priestess you had kept with you all along during this season, during these years of drought and rain, it's interesting. There, there wasn't the merging of the harmony of the, the, the Garden of Delights, you know, the promised land. It was either the drought or the flood. Too much or too little. Too much or too little. And talk about wearing somebody out and taking you out. That is what had happened, okay? So now the, the, the fruits and the emblems of the high priestess had remained, but now the high priestess energy returns. All right. Oh, that's percolating your midheaven up there. I love that. And it's opening up channels of gates like, like the annals of time are opening here to bring forth. They're talking about missed opportunity, missed prosperity. That, that somehow when it opens this, it opens up like a form of eternity, a back to the future, a time loop, that sort of thing, and allows access to all that to catch current, to become current, to become now. Oh, which is the swiftness and why they're asking you to open up because that's a lot to deal with. 
there. Some of you have been stuck in this for quite a period of time, and that's a lot to catch up on. But Spirit's like, if, if anybody could do it, we could do it, and we'll do it like this. It'll actually be painless. It will just be slightly disorienting, and then we'll get you back on track. So now we're getting you back on track. We have the Five of Pentacles going on here. This fish is more than, uh, you know, provision, prosperity. It's coming in. It's like the hopes, wishes, and dreams of the divine. It's like a chamber and a vessel to carry you safely from that world of air down to this world of air. And there'll be that connection, that divine connection that allows you a uh, vitality and um, the ability to thrive in this environment. Because when you come here, the, the fish will release you out once you come through the waters. So that could be grief, that could be sorrow, that could be the tests that are going on right now. Remember that flood, drought, flood, drought, flood. Well, I guess it ends with the flood. So let's find out a bit more about what's going on right here. Let's go into the new deck that we got uh, for the channel here. And we're going to get, these are vice versa. So take a look. Two sides, one story. You see that? Okay. So let's get some clarity. I want to start with the flood that Cancer is in right now. So it has to do with an awakening of your power, um, giving you access to those resources. Remember how here we showed the shockwave of opening up these past times? Well, that's when you die, you go down to the earth, you know, you recycle down to the earth. So they're like, we got to soften that earth so now you can rise and resurrect back up. But there's been this major thunderstorm, this clash, this energy, this uh, speaking of the heavens to draw this energy forth from the center of the earth to become synergy to begin to uh, cause the moldings and the inner workings to come together but piggybacked on that is this strength card going on here but really it's seeing the eyes of the damn darn dang devil and devil is just the evil of our mind it's the devil is lived backwards Okay, so it's staring down your past, facing down your past and deciding you're not when the flood comes, you're going not anymore. And then you shh, go to the other side of the ship and you're like, so we're going to live in a drought. And then you're like, oh, not anymore. Shh, and you go to the other side of the ship and there comes the flood. No, this time, can you see this balance? This is the balance of your mind's eye looking straight at it, facing this life down, what you've lived the past. And you're going no more. I see through you, and I see through you to this. When I can get back to the life that I'm here to live, to the strength that I'm here to give, to the mastery that I bring to the table, and the mastery is that balanced mind's eye, that being able to stare things down that runs other people off, and to be able to call it what it is, not what it seems fabricated to be, not through the eyes of emotion, nor through the... Uh, the fear of wrongful death, any of that, because apparently you've, you've had your fair share, your taste of it going on here. But there's become this taming and this turning and this temperance, which to me is a process. To temper, it takes a specific process to bring about the desired results, to have both the hardness and the shine, to have that, that protection going on. Because when you feel safe, you feel stable. All right, Cancer? And when you're stable, it'll be no more drought and flood because your environment around you reflects what's going on inside of you. Okay, so anybody who knows a cancer, y'all won't let always let you feel and show, right? You're very loving, very giving, but there's a lot that you keep to yourself that you bear your own burdens, but you can just look around your world to see what that's like because you might have even lost touch with it yourself because it's become so vibrational that you forgot what all the process of it was and how to move forward in it, right? So take a look in your environment begin to touch your environment. It's kind of that old Chinese proverb, you want to change your life, make 27 changes in your environment. It could be simply moving your toothbrush to a different hole in the holder. It could be putting your hairbrush on the left side of the sink. It could be changing the colors of your sheets to a, a set you haven't used in years. Different things like that, maybe getting off some old tennis shoes because they hurt your feet and getting some new ones. 
those little steps and changes are, are like shattering. They shatter that old mindset. And here, your heart is dancing, not just your body, your mind and your soul are dancing and enjoying the stars, the dreams, where you're at at the moment. And that centering, that stabilizing, that that brings in here, the balance of your uh, four angles is what affords this newness to come in here, okay? To stand on that damn darn dang devil <laughs> and to get past your past. Not to take it with you, thinking you've left it behind. <laughs> but literally to, to sever the cord in the mind, to be of one accord and to bring it together and like destroy that blurred vision. So um, I'm gonna get credit card on the center of this womb of the five of pentacles your world that you're bringing in not you stepped past the past right let's get a peek into your world here cancer cancer's world cancer's world all right all beautiful hearth and home look at that so you're having the dance with the divine and you're enjoying the pace of time, like that is your rhythm going on up here. You have the moon going on within your home. And what you may not be able to see in front of it is a map that says welcome. So that's you being in balance in your world. Okay, so that's coming in. Okay, that's linking us to the Lady of Pentacles going on here. Because that's a balance in your energy. Remember we talked about even if you're having all these feelings and you can't remember what it's all about, look at your environment. It begins to speak. Make this 27 changes and watch your entire life change. Here you're stepping into that space where all of a sudden you begin to feel stable. You begin to feel that you are in control of some of it going on. That you do have a contribution to make to your life. That it's not just everything controlling you and moving you and manipulating you. Okay, so let's take a dive into this Lady of Pentacles. Give us some little background of what's going on, that beautiful stability and the rising, that, that dissension and, and the, the, it would be ascension, but it's like a, a punch bag. It's like all you have to do is make the decision to do the descent and you're going to have the return already. It's like guaranteed. So that high priestess that returns with you as well as, uh, a way to connect from your heart with others. I'm going to need two cards here. Mm -mm, I'm putting you back. To me, you tried to squeeze in there. All right, so the first one that we get to see. Makes sense, the power, the control. We talk about the wheel. Well, the wheel of fortune is about our zodiac. It's about being able to understand ourselves and the cycles of life through this, but not to be played through the tarot, but for us to begin to be the hand, the body, the person, the divine one outside of it that, that plays the instrument, that makes the song of life based on your streams, your strings, your connections to yourself and how to navigate it, how to express it, how to communicate through and with that. Fantastic. Okay, so that's the bit of the high priestess, that, that divulgence of that wisdom and knowledge, and that's, remember, that synergizing, that you, uh, for one, you radiate out from your center, but you also connect, right? And then you draw back in new energy. It goes out one way, it contacts the parts of your zodiac, your experience, your environment, and it draws in with new information, just like the nervous system. It travels out to my hand to get feedback about the cold of this glass table, and it talks to my brain. And then my brain, it sends out new information to respond, and then it becomes this divine communication. Now from that, what do we have coming in here? It's having to do with raw. Eye of God. Well, you know, I call it the Eye of God all the time. The Eye of God is when we become our whole natal chart. When we know, because I have, I have a handful of houses that have no placement in it. But that zodiac house has a house placement. And I can learn from that. And often, 
if there's something missing, they say we have nothing to learn there, but at the same time, we can also draw people who have trouble in those areas. And we just keep working ourselves and working ourselves, and we're staying beneath the wheel, like, like the work and the play, the work and the play, instead of realizing we're the divine one who has the power to turn it, the power to learn it, the power to master ourselves and to dance with our days and our nights. Okay? You see how this is reflected more as the magician here in the background? Okay, who have that divine ankh being lifted up. This is really tying it together here that that becomes a, a channel point, a um, obelisk of sorts that is a contact point that you can be contacted at all times. It's giving your permission for your zodiac to speak to you, for your wisdom to speak to you, for your higher self, your divine self, to give you the insight, intuition, and wisdom, and that it doesn't conflict or rub you the wrong way or strike you funny or frustrate you it's it's like an openness of the heart remember the lady of pentacles here that's what she was talking about is how she gets hands to her heart to have that that navigability to divine and dance with it okay well that's your strength it's a tempering stream it keeps you both powerful and youthful. It keeps a bit of, it's not naivety, but it has to do with like sincerity. Kind of like innocent faith, which is very powerful because faith is divine, intuitive. It's, it's a deeper knowing. But then there's also um, the power and the manifestation coming in. That's the divine cup. I see the trophy. The trophy is the freedom to stay fresh and new every day. To live in the light of this divine power. To allow um, that influence of your divine self to come in. And your job is to be response able, responsible to obelisk. Remember that you're connected and you give the permission of the synergy of this understanding of this wisdom to come in divine and navigate through you and to live through you so that you're not having to live out of hindsight of I shouldn't have that, I shouldn't have that, oh my god, that's so terrible, that was so whatever, you know, from the drought to you know, from the famine to the feast, from the drought to the flood, that type of energy, to where it comes into the perfect balance and you're letting us know it brings the balance is the sun. The sun brings the balance. So for whatever reason you're here at a cancer reading, check out where your sun sign is, okay, and what house it is in specifically, okay, and do a little research in that area. All right, so now let's check out the wise fox and find the background of going on with this divine dance of how you found joy and pleasure in this relationship with life, that, that death and endings are actually the beautiful new beginnings, that the way to embrace, um, to live each day to the full, to live a life of no regrets is what you're telling me. Tell us about that life of no regrets here. You're diving down, baby. It's diving down. But let's look here first. Hang on. Hey there. I'm back. Life's little interruptions. And there is nothing I can do about it. So talk about the power of learning. The power of learning comes when there are things that we cannot control. That is when we have to fully surrender and surrender and do this death, I guess. How funny to have that divine example. Step in and learn to dance in it. Learn to find the joy in it. And learn to find, they're saying, the sweet spot. How you can just step right back in and keep your energy jiving and keep it going. To shed frustration, to shed things that could latch on to other people. But literally, it's that oil, it's that anointing, it's that knowledge of knowing that, hey, I have this moment. I have now. I'm going to make the most of it. And that's what the emperor is doing here, is looking out over the city, looking out over the vista, taking rest in the position. It's a very much, um, I caught it the emperor, didn't I? Okay. Well, this is the four of pentacles, but that's definitely the emperor. You'll see why. Take a look. Do you see there? Looking out, but I'm seeing it looking out over the city, but that city is a mirror. Okay, so that mirror, that city, that landscape is yourself. You're a vast city. And as we know, a city has lots of workings. It has infrastructure, things that have to uh, communicate one amongst another and be in 
communication on the same page to gain that understanding. Look at that divine rod. Navigating that labyrinth of your mind. And here, those pinnacles become orbs. They become illuminated. They become powers and magnificence. It's working at the balance of them to allow them to be set and stable as opposed to having to work them with your mind, okay? Letting it become established, a city, an establishment. Staking claim, staking claim. Deciding on order, setting your mind's eye on order. Choosing to make that turn, to lead the pack, okay? To allow that quick exchange of energy. If something comes in to ripple or to ruffle, you just... <laughs> you inhale and you exhale and you just allow it to move on to transition onward so um ah jump on in yeah and jump right back in right back in where you were okay before the disturbance and to be able to carry on from there so that way it doesn't cause you to shrivel and to dry up or to be all emotional and stirred up where it puts out all that water even from the drought and the famine to the flood and and the uh the the feast okay sorry wrong one it's got me all disturbed here we have the three of swords coming in upside down speaking of flood but you have it upside down turning it around taking a whole different take a whole different perspective on it of being able to put that behind you remember coming in over here and that strength that new world coming in is to be able to look at it and see what it is and to move on from there, to move on from there, and to not be afraid of what other people are afraid of, whoever the others are, but to be able to, because see, that's your actual fear. This is not, okay? Maybe she's a dentist here. I've always wanted to take care of teeth. <laughs> there was like, why do you want to take care of teeth? <laughs> like in Rudolph, uh, Herbie wants to be a dentist. And everybody's like, no, you're, you're an elf. You're going to make toys. But instead, he had made himself happy, chose to be happy. And he was able to help everybody and to start this grand new world where things that seemed like misfits, like pieces and parts that didn't make sense, that seemed like failures, destruction, um, mishaps, misfires, that type of thing, and bringing it into this divine balance, the bigger picture of love and acceptance. Okay, so we're going from there, from death, over to the Ace of Wands. And with that, we have Sweet Delights, bringing you back together to a heart that's at peace, a heart that's at rest, a heart that whispers a sweet love, or we could say sweet nothings because the, the zero, the fool, the fool's in nothing. And when you know nothing, you know everything. And that's being able to be fully present, enjoying the moment. Inhaling and exhaling. Remember, we... <laughs> like the swiftness, right? To make that that swift turn, that swift change. Because um, I've heard this one, one teacher talk about shifting your state. And that is what's most important, that ownership of self, that self-control. We can't control the whole world going on around us, and especially not at this point in time, right? There's very little that we're able to control at this time. And being able to surrender to flowing, but also when something kind of comes in and ripples you, blows you off course, that you can own it and then release it right you have the power to make that change through that ownership the ownership of who you are and how you navigate life and it gets you right back on course so this ace of wands this discovery this uncovering of your divineness lots of things are, are facing everything like you're facing your past. Here was that powerful energy coming in. Not only is the um, three of swords in the past, you've turned it on its ear. And you, you've regained trust from this. It's like the flood of this was all these seeds sown, these, these tears sown, these prayers made, these, these hopes exalted and lifted up. That... Um, Part of the answer of that prayer coming forth is you becoming friends with yourself again.
making peace with yourself, trusting yourself from whatever this was that made you doubt yourself, question yourself, undermine yourself, that layering effect that was going on. It's taken away, washed away those layers of time to get you over here because now we've made that descent and we're returning up, finding joy in the present, in the moment, to be able to come up and let even our power chakras be unveiled. To really, it's not even just about the world. It's to find out what we're made of in this world. The empowerment and the position and authority that you have in this world over yourself, with yourself, and for yourself. And the main thing you have is over your energy, okay? And your synergy with your environment. Other people may be able to come along or situations or COVID or uh, closings or openings. Businesses come in and shake and ripple and move that. But it's you who decides your attitude. It's you who decides your mental position, your eyes, your perspective of how to see it. And that sets the tone for your mind and your brain. Ah, I love it. I love it. For the nice swords, like, this is actually, I'm going to show you, you, because this is what you're doing. You're moving forward to go out and to obtain what it is that your mind has set its sights on. And in this, this is more about that attitude. So it's not necessarily things that you're setting on, you're setting on the feelings, the feelings that you want to have experiencing in your body right now. That's being in a state of health, wholeness, and wellness. Whoa. Well, that came out of nowhere. Your sword be all lit up. It's not even a sword. It's a, uh, what's that? It's a lightsaber. Yeah, you got that power in your hand. Use the force. Because this person is levitating and moving over vastly. Remember the swift, swiftness? It helps you move over a conundrum that could have just taken you a massive amount of time, a, a major setback, but instead you're like, mm-mm, Obi-Wan, come on in. Use the force. You've trained me well. I'll just levitate. I'll just meditate to levitate, and I'll just whew, whew, make that shift point, that decision, and return my energy unto myself through the power of my decision. And right here, oh my, oh my. He's beyond the King of Pentacles. He's like the father of all time. That's what he's showing here. The ancient father and a good father. I see seahorse energy here. I see the one of the harvest. I see the one that keeps the promises. I see the almighty one here. trust because your innocent trust remember we talked about this innocent faith going on here that it cost you everything to have these seeds of love innocent faith is that seed of love believing in love believing in the eternalness of the being able to move forward to be brave in spite of uh the fire and the water you know all that you've seen all that you've experienced this junk right because that's a sheep shawl, shawl, whoops, sheep shawl on his shoulders, and you're the sheep. But the facets of your life, this is you, have fed and clothed your divine one, your almighty one, because you are everlasting. And that's the thing, like I, I would say, I step over my own dead body, man, when my attitude, when my perspective gets in my own way, but my heart is calling me forward, that bravery card that we have here, all I know to do is to step over myself down there, hold my breath, turning blue, like, no, 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 just step on over, I'm like, oh, I don't know what's going to happen, but that's the faith, the innocence of that child, right? That bringing forth the shining of the sun, knowing a new day will dawn, a new day is coming, and it's going to be sweet. That's what your almighty one, your everlasting one is telling me. It's going to be sweet. And how do I know? Because you're a star. A star has to do with understanding divine order, the juxtaposition of energies in order to bring about the ultimate radiance. And in order to get radiance, you have to facet and you have to cut away. And you have to chisel away to find out what is in the center, the light. Okay, so that as the light strikes it, it radiates out and you see yourself perfectly, clearly, cleanly in the mirror as you are made. But see that Walla Melon? Talk about some Independence Day. Here in the United States, um, generally 4th Fourth, Fourth of July, which is just called our Independence Day, is synonymous with watermelon. 
and fireworks. So talk about a brand new day, a, a delicious, juicy day, a day of independence and freedom, of knowing that you have to fear nothing, that it, it was not for naught. It all has purpose. All your pain has purpose, my loved one. All of your pain has purpose. So let's get a card here on these spirals of time on that that shocker there because I noticed the crown of victory around your head is a golden crown. It's not just the green of the laurel leaves. You talk about the major alchemy is when you can uh, convert that lead, that heavy head, that, that um, doubt, that shame, that grief, that darkness, all of that, and convert it into gold of this knowing, of this complete and utter trust, of this established rock firm foundation of faith. The cornucopia of life spills forth before you, and you're able to enjoy it and see it and know it. So tell us about this whole world that you hold in your hands as we take you forth right there. I see you all. This is the world that you hold in the hands. The power of your imagination. Your imagination is what works even up above you. It is your divine connection with heaven here on earth. And it's how you touch heaven and how you let heaven touch you. It's the divine kiss. The divine kiss. Well, that's fantastic, Cancer. Thank you for taking through us through this powerful revelation. I look forward to sitting on the other side of this lens with you guys and taking all this in and applying it to my life and bringing forth all that juicy, delicious, independent, yummy fruit, right? Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate today here now. I love you. Bye.